Ladies and gentlemen, Psalms 71, and I'm reading from verse 5 to verse 7. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been lifted up from the womb. You are he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall continually be to you. I am as a wonder unto many, but you are my strong refuge. It's just funny how the words hope and wonder are in those scriptures. I wonder because where you should naturally fall because people want to destroy you, you rise. From the depths of the grave, the womb, the womb of the earth is the grave of the earth, the center of the earth. From the depths of the earth, you rise up and you're reborn. It's interesting hearing Henry Cavill speak of Superman's resurrection. He prefers to think of it as a rebirth, as he's signaling to rebirth comics. And I thought that was very interesting. And of course, the wonder being Wonder Woman, she being wise, she's seen as a wonder. So, I just want to point out to you guys that the Lord God is our sustenance, our hope. And I don't know how you perceive God, but for me, God is life. And so, all things that we see in life and all things that we can perceive and we can uh, have our constructs about, to me, that is God, in essence, seen and unseen things. Now, let's talk about Justice League. And this video is a continuation of three other videos. Those videos were speaking about the CGI of Thor Ragnarok being superior somehow to the CGI of Justice League. And I've already gone into some, some detail about that. I'm going to go into even more detail on that now, but in a, in, a, in a bigger way. Because I want to show you guys just what kind of caliber and level of CGI we were seeing in Justice League. Now, I think some of that, that uh, beauty that you saw, that art, was somewhat dampered or sort of downgraded because of the CGI that happened with Superman, particularly in the scenes where Joss Whedon had a hand in either reshooting or in directing. And some of that CGI was incomplete. However, there was also some CGI where Zack directed but that CGI, he wasn't finished with the post-production work. And you can tell that there is a difference in caliber of CGI to the CGI where he actually got his full hands on and was working on. And so we're going to go into detail about that. And we're also going to look at the MCU. But we're also going to look at one other Marvel film. People don't consider it a Marvel film, but it is. It's a franchise of its own, Star Wars, which has been bought out by Marvel. And it's a Marvel brand. And it also is under Disney. So we're going to look at all of those things because when we talk about Star Wars, we think epics. We don't think anything short of epic. Zack Snyder raised the bar on epics and we'll talk about that as well. All right. So let's get into it. So here in front of you, first of all, we were introduced to the Justice League by having this cheap uh, little uh, phone camera, which these poor children who were inspired by Superman in a very poor neighborhood. You can tell this is a poor neighborhood. Um, these kids look up to Superman and they got their little camera and thing. And you can see it's, it's back in 2015 when they interviewed him. And their battery is dying. You can tell that. And they're very inspired. These two little children, probably 10 and 6 or 5. And they're interviewing Superman. They get an opportunity to see their hero. Now, nothing's wrong with that, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people were all... Um, a lot of people were annoyed by the sound of the children's voices, for starters. I know I was. Uh, but I was able to overlook that and just follow the story. Because for me, story is everything. And so, it was very dramatic when, you know, Superman paused, smiled, and then he was about to give the little boy an answer. And the screen just went, poof. I thought it was very dramatic. And I thought it was a nice touch by Joss Whedon. It was a different approach to what Zack usually does. Zack comes from a very painting painterist, beautiful, artful sort of way of introducing a movie. This one was a little bit different. And again, 
all the little differences that Josh Reedon brought to this movie, for the most part, I actually enjoyed because it was something different. It was a merger of two different kinds of um, directors. So I actually enjoyed that, that it was different to what I usually see in a Zack film. But having said all of that, uh, the CGI let down this scene slightly. And I'll point out the CGI, which everyone talks about, which, you know, and they had memes on it and stuff like that, which is the CGI here, where uh, you can tell that the Uncanny Valley is going on. This guy's mouth just suddenly sprayed open, and it's really weird, and it's awkward, okay? It was just a moment in time. Uh, all of his other CGI looked more or less like this. They're, again, the CG that they do lacks details. So the details in Henry Cavill's face, and then they accentuate certain details in his face that makes his face look cartoonish, more of a caricature. And so if you were paying attention to that, if you weren't paying attention to that and you didn't know about the mustache gate and all of that stuff, then you wouldn't be paying attention to it. It, your mind would register it, but yet, at the same time, it, it would be so sudden and so quick that you wouldn't actually pay attention to it. So, um, there's a difference in CGI quality, in the CGI uh, between Zack's CGI and when Whedon and his people come on board and do the CGI. There is a difference. And I wanted to just point that out, and I think that is what people... Uh, some people who had a hate towards this film or came in hating Joss Whedon, they would use that. This particular image they used as memes and they took it and really was just a small point in time. <laughs> and yet they exaggerated it and they carried it to the next level. All right. And um, so there were a couple of scenes in Justice League where Henry Cavill is present, where his CGI was not on the level of the CGI that the film had uh, before. Okay. So what I would say is that because the CGI was at certain points in the film and they were far and few between, certain points in the film were not up to the level of the CGI of the film, people are saying that Justice League had poor CGI. The other thing people continuously say about the DCU is because the DCU is approaching a much more realistic vein and they use certain color palettes, um, people say, oh, well, the just, you know, the DCU has murky CGI, it's poor quality, and, and it's poor, you can't see what's going on, and that's what they keep on saying, and it's dark. Again, this is very superficial, fickle thinking, because S Marvel has brought the MCU particularly, not Marvel, because we have X-Men, which is Marvel, we have Star Wars, which is Marvel franchises, those are also Marvel, okay? Particularly, the MCU has been very colorful. There are a lot of flaming colors with the MCU. You know, it's very flamboyant. And I think because of that and the digital way how these images are portrayed, digital filming, I think those people who see actual film film and that film doesn't have the, that really sharp resolution image, somehow they think that's subpar to the digital film and the very colorful digital film. So that's what we're dealing with. Now I've speaking, spoken about this point a number of times, but I want to show you same Josh Sweden, and I noticed that this time, not saying that Josh Sweden was responsible for the set design and the CGI and those things, he did have some say in it. Um, Obviously, he wasn't even he he didn't even do most of the choreographed fight scenes for this between Batman and the Parademon. He had some say in it, but obviously he could not be the one that planned it from scratch. There had to be a lot of plan and design what the stuntmen were going to do. He did bring in an actor to do this particular scene. He did direct it or redirect it. I'm not too sure which one it is, but the important thing is here he also had a part to play in this particular scene which had to do with Batman, the Parademon, and the robber. Obviously, the set design was done before. A lot of, as Ben Affleck would say, a lot of prep work has been done way before this even happened. So this was a scene that had to be directed. Whedon was allowed to do that scene. This scene here with Superman and the kids and stuff, of course, Whedon was responsible for that scene. But obviously, this is a scene, of, once again, that there was prep work and there was stuff already there to do it. Okay, 
So it's not like Wheaton's going against a script or outside of what the storyboard is for the story. The storyboard has been designed. Wheaton maybe had to shoot certain things. He decided maybe to reshoot certain things. But there was a storyboard there. So it's, let me just make it abundantly clear. Whedon could not change this story. This story was in the direction it was going to go. What Whedon could do was he could shorten up certain things. That's why he had reshoots. He could, um, you know, be a little bit inventive and, and have certain situations there that the storyboard had and be put his own flavor and touch on things. But he could not change the story. That's not possible. All right? Now... That we have gotten that out the way, and we know that the principal person behind the story for Justice League was Zack Snyder. We see that this is CG. And what I wanted to point out to you guys is we saw Gotham City before. We saw Gotham City in the night before in the movie Suicide Squad. And there's the city down below, and here's pieces of the city here. So it's not the first time this city was there. This city had been rendered. This city had been created already from the ground up and these the, these are cgi worlds okay so when people talk about thor ragnarok they had to create a world well guess what the world you were looking at in gotham was a cgi world it was not a real world okay and these are things these people don't get they don't get that world building doesn't just because it's, it's gotham doesn't exist okay uh, world building doesn't mean that you know these movies like Justice League and etc. and all the worlds of the and all the movies of the DCU they didn't build these worlds from scratch and they're CG worlds they're not real worlds. Okay, and the level of detail in these worlds is very important for people to recognize. Let's move on. So Whedon was responsible for these two parts of Justice League. Okay, and he you know with Batman he tried his best with the scene he had to direct. Um, the aesthetics for the scene, he had some influence over the aesthetics as well. But by and large, this was already there for him to direct and, and, and decide how he was going to have the script, uh, you know, flow. Okay? He had a lot of leverage in how the script was flowing. Even though Warner Bros. had to check him because <laughs> he wanted to bring in too much humor. Now, this is what I talk about. When I talk about phenomenal CG, I'm talking about phenomenal CG. The scene uh, where Wonder Woman rescues the hostages, which is, people say Whedon had something to do with that. It was all Zack Snyder. Now, what I would suggest to you guys is you go and you get the, co the 4K copy with bonus features. And you'll see from start to finish, it's Zack Snyder. Now, they cut out a lot of action scenes because I got some more footage of the woman who was the stunt woman for uh, Wonder uh, for. Uh, Gal Gadot, who is playing uh, Wonder Woman, Diana Prince. And let me show you how good the CG is. Now, first of all, you remember in the trailers, we, we knew that when she threw this guy, he was a CG flying in the air. I dare you guys to figure out if he's CG when you see it in the movie. This is, this is, this is the guy flying here with his gloves and everything. It's just him th her throwing him in the movie. It looks real as day. It looks like she's throwing the guy. And the reason is because the CG that they do is they don't just they have the the, the 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 cg body first of all and they they actually have all the pre uh, as we say the pre scenes shot in cg okay and then they put the actual person on top the person who has been filmed and scanned they put them into the cg model. so it's the actual person but yet it's it's an image it's a virtual image of that person that you actually see so it's a combined fusion between the cg and the actual person now, here's what's so cool about this whole thing, all right? So she took the guy and she flung him. And, of course, there's a lot more action than that that had been cut out of the film. And that's what I keep, keep on telling you guys. It's not that a lot of story or scenes, even though there's some story that's been cut out of the film, but it's been snipped here and it's snipped there and snipped here and snipped there when it comes to the story. But when it comes to, and the history in the background, but when it comes to actual action scenes, capability of characters and that kind of stuff, that Zach had put in all that good, juicy stuff that would probably equal another 30, 40 minutes, right? That was snipped out of the film. But it's mostly the action scenes. And Wonder Woman's action scenes, she, she, she kicked ass even more than you guys got to see. And it's tough. But everything that Wonder Woman did actually happened in the movie, okay? Everything you saw there with Wonder Woman, I believe Zack Snyder directed. 
alright? And what's cool about this is the CG so seamlessly, most of the time, seamlessly blends in with Gal Gadot's live action. For instance, this image here looks like Gal blocking these people, but it's actually a CG added face of Gal put onto the body of this woman, the stunt woman that was doing the action sequence for her, and even skinned, her body's even skinned like Gal. In other words, there's a lot of CG work that actually was done in this scene so that what you think is Gal, you know, and sometimes looks like a CG model sometimes, is an actual other person. The person's not necessarily in mocap, but they have been sort of, um, their body has actually been reorganized to look like Gal. And it's crazy, even all of this is CG. And even this scene here where you see uh, Gal was spinning on the ground blocking bullets and stuff, that's also CG. It's just, it's so freaking crazy uh, how much CG actually is incorporated and infused with real life drama. And that's the kind of level of CG we're talking about. Alright? Then, of course, and so that CG and of course the explosions that happened up in the air and all that shit is CG. Now, then we had, of course, Barry Allen meeting Bruce Wayne. But even before that, I think, yes, I think we had the Amazon scene where Steppenwolf arrives amongst the Amazons, right? Steppenwolf was CG. Now, I always tell people, the Steppenwolf we saw at the beginning of the movie, even though at certain points we could see the uncanny valley with Steppenwolf when he's talking, for the most part, and sometimes his face kind of changes uh, later on in the movie to what we saw in the beginning. But for the most part, Steppenwolf CG is incredible. I mean, you buy that this is an actual character in the world that we're looking at. The fusion, the merger of Steppenwolf into the world is real, okay? And of course, Steppenwolf is he's a horrific kind of character, and he's a horrific looking character, so he's supposed to look horrific. And this, not only that, but the parademons, nobody even talks about this. The parademons look extremely real. You don't think that the parademons are see They move real. And we're going to get back to that because we're going to compare these parademons to uh, some of the CG-generated characters in Thor Ragnarok, the, the villains of Thor Ragnarok that helped assist Hela. And those things move like CG characters. They don't move like the parademons did. You'd swear the parademons were real creatures. Now, let's go back to what I was saying. So the Flash... All that CG that was used in motion capture, and let me just say, motion capture and CG uh, has come a long way, but what's incredible is I don't see the MCU doing this stuff. They don't do it, okay? We don't see it in Star Wars. We haven't seen it in X-Men. Oh, yes, we have seen it in X-Men with uh, um, Quicksilver. I've seen it once with Quicksilver, right? We've seen Quicksilver do it. But for the most part, we have not seen that, and not on the level that we see it in a justice thing. And one other thing I want to say, with the CG we see effects. So we actually see the atmosphere shake and change and wobble. Sort of like bend in space. That's stuff we've never seen before. Not even in Quicksilver, none of those movies. And that shows again the physics of the world. And I love that about it. Even with Steppenwolf and the Parademons as they're coming through the boom tube and the boom tube is moving, you can see the light moving and reflecting on, on a Steppenwolf. And a light actually warping. And that's something, again, you're talking about CG, that's a whole other level of doing things in CG. Now, what I'm going to spend most of my time with is the Great War. Even though it was a short uh, flashback, and I'm sure there was more footage of the Great War, and that thing was so freaking epic, it's not funny. <sighs> From the color palettes to the tone, to the physics of the environment, to the CGI of the environment, is incredible. It's incredible. And let me show you what I mean. I got to show you what I mean because there's no way to, say, to speak about this. This is something that's epic and it's on another level, period. We've seen something like that in 300, but not to this level. So here, everything you're looking at here is CG. There is nothing here that's not CG. Nothing. And the physics of it, I was actually seeing the heat as the door is coming down. You see the heat and, the, and everything kind of waving in space and, and the particles. and Just so much freaking detail and physics going on here. All right. Then we see the Mother Dox is fusing. And we see the atmosphere waving and the heat and the fire. This is what we were supposed to see. Something like this, at least. Of course, here are the priests below and they're all CG as well. Okay, and then you have the armies in the background, all CG, and it feels so freaking real. 
oh, it's just so crazy. You know, how they get the depth perception and everything in their CG. It's just so elaborate. And it's amazing. And the beautiful color palettes and just the artwork. And it just feels like art you're looking at. It is so incredible. That alone, the Great War, I could spend forever on the Great War because it's masterful CG. And the fact that you, you're looking at this stuff and you really believe that this actual, this huge armies are coming at each other. It was just a brief moment in time in Justice League. They did not spend a lot of time on it, unfortunately. But here again, Steppenwolf in all his glory looks fantastic, does not look like CG. This looks like a real world, the depth perception, all of the mountainsides, the fire the coming out of the, the vehicles here, the parademons in the background, the dust and mist from the fire that's raising up, the parademons, this is physics, the world, look at the dust on the ground. Now, I want you to pay attention to all of these details because details makes a difference. All right, and we'll come back to this when we're dealing with the final fight steam with Steppenwolf and the Justice League. And I'll show you how it lacks that detail and it also lacks the physics of the environment. So here you can see how massive the huge scale at which Steppenwolf's forces are coming, the fire coming out of the hell spores from the earth, the fire coming out of the vehicles as well, and uh, Omega Silver symbol all over the ground, the dust rising up. It almost reminds us of a Lord of the Rings thing, but just in much more detail. All Steppenwolf's armies spreading out from this valley area, and you can see it all in the background. You can see the sun setting or rising. I'm not too sure which one it is. And then the epic war with all these armies, everything there is CG. Everything. It's incredible. Epic. And I'll come back to Star Wars. Star Wars does this kind of CG. The level of CG. The level of CG of Star Wars is just incredible as well. And while this is 35 millimeter film, you can feel everything. It's visceral. Look at the armies as they charge towards the armies that are all virtual. All of these, 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 these Vikings are real people. And they're charging towards a virtual world, but you feel like this is a real world coming towards them. And all of it's green screen. None of it exists. This is green screen you're looking at. These armies running and charging towards them are charging towards green screen. There's nothing there, but it feels real. We see the Amazons on horseback charging towards uh, the armies, the, the, the apocalyptic armies, right? Beautiful stuff. And by the way, there's Hippolyta on the side there, and I believe that is her sister. Okay, Antiope. And there's Antiope leaping high up in the air, off the horse. And there is some mocap people, but it's, it's not as much charging towards her. So there, there are pyrodemons charging towards her in mocap. And we have the Amazons on horses, and they are charging towards them. And there are real horses. These are real horses. But the point is, the background is all CG. It's CG you're looking at. But it feels so freaking real. And look at the ground. Look at the ground is breaking up. Look at the fire coming through the ground. The mist, the smoke. This is real stuff. The physics of it. It's beautiful. And then we see here Ares. And, and it, 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 before I even get there. And here we have, of course... Um, a Green Lantern who is helping fight them and see how huge he is. But I also wanted to point out the Vikings. You can tell this is a Viking here. And another Viking with his spear. And all the details involved with the ground and the green light from the Green Lantern makes the ground green. And his ring and he's about to leap up in the air and he's so much bigger than the Vikings and stuff around him. Just amazing. I just was able to capture this shot here. And all the fire and smoke and the mountains on fire and everything. It's just so it's so much detail. Here you see Steppenwolf killing the Green Lantern. It's killing him here. So beautiful. And look at how much detail on the Green Lantern. And how much detail on Steppenwolf. And it feels real. The movement feels real. It's just incredible. This is Steppenwolf being struck by lightning by Zeus. And there you see the Green Lantern lying dead on the ground. His ring is going off in the distance. It's incredible. It's incredible. Look at all the action over here that's happening. A parademon picks up an Amazon. You can see another uh, person about to strike the parademon. You can see all the vehicles in the background and the fire coming out of the vehicles. Like hell. It's just so amazing. Look at this stuff. And another parademon on the side here. And all of this stuff, a lot of it <laughs> is actual virtual world. Incredible. 
Aries leaping up into the air. You can see him charging towards Steppenwolf. So grand. And again, the 35 millimeter uh, cameras, they pick up details, but they pick it up in such a manner that it feels like a film. And look, look at the lava on the ground. Look at all that lava. Look at the ground is melting off. Look at the dead people in the background. There is Steppenwolf being on, hit by Zeus. Look how his hands glow up. Look at all the detail. Look at all the detail. And the battle's happening. And you can see different people fighting in the background. Look at the big ships. All of this is CGI, ladies and gentlemen. CGI. Steppenwolf being carried back into the ship. CGI. It's not real. His movements feel real, but it's not real. It's incredible. Incredible. And then we see... Uh, a picture of the the gods among the men and the, the Amazons. We have the Amazons here. There's uh, Hippolyta and Tyope. Uh, this is uh, the the first commander who is with Antiope. You have the Amazons there. We have the Vikings. These are the the, the world of men. We even have a Amazon amongst them. And then we have here the Atlanteans on the side. We got uh, Artemis. The god, you know, god of war. We got Ares over here, and we got Zeus. They're much bigger, much taller, much more powerful. We got all the, uh, all the uh, parademons lying on the ground. You gotta understand, this is CG. These are CG parademons. You gotta understand that. Oh my god, so epic. And then when we look at other scenes, such as the tunnel scene, where. Uh, that is again epic and again lots of detail. Look at the lighting. Uh, Steppenwolf with his axe, which uh, glows like lava, is attacking here the what I think is the uh, the Nightcrawler. You know, it's just it, it's impeccable special effects. I in fact expect Steppenwolf looks fantastic here. He is being knocked back as uh, Wonder Woman hits him with her power that comes through her bracelets. This is some ep epic stuff. And I mean, just that entire tunnel battle, the CGI is on a totally different level to anything we've ever seen. So many special effects because all of these superheroes have superpowers. So there's all this superpower stuff going on. You see the light bending, the world bending, the flash, he moves like a bolt of lightning. So he streaks across when he's saving Wonder Woman, he just streaks as a bolt of lightning, but some people didn't even see it. You know, you see Batman fall on his neck and he goes, oof. It's really crazy just the amount of detail that happens in these movies. And you just have to kind of some, some that slow them down to see all that detail, all that planning. And that world, that whole entire tunnel world, while it's, some of it was a set, a lot of it was CG. And Steppenwolf, remember, is a CG character and he feels solid. It feels like a real threat and everything. So far, I think the CG of Steppenwolf was pretty consistent, except when he was over in Russia and he was talking about getting the other mother boxes and he was kind of talking to mother. Sometimes his face looked like his mouth kind of bent forward, like it came out of his face, which looked kind of weird. But other than that, uh, basically Steppenwolf looked like Steppenwolf throughout the movie. And so here I want to talk a bit about the CG incorporated with the real world stuff. So this is a, a set, okay? It is a set. And this has been a set since Man of Steel. But what's amazing about it is, look at Cyborg. Look how real he looks. In fact, the close-up shots of Cyborg look real. In the resurrection of Superman, the Flash using super speed passing by a Kryptonian pod here. <laughs> Just I thought I'd mention that. And again, exceptional CGI most for the most part. I know they didn't finish off the CGI quite. And I think they rendered some of it in 65 millimeter, um, and which is why it maybe looked clearer. And then they tried to lighten it up. So I think some of it was, some of the CG wasn't quite on the mark, especially when Superman was facing off against the League. But here, you do, you have to understand, everything you're watching except for this little platform here, which Henry Cavill is on with the this prop, these two, these props here, and this stuff here. Everything here is CG. And then CG is used to put the watermarks on the ground. This is not, the this, this set wasn't anything like this on this level. So they skinned everything. The city you're looking at is CG. All right? While this police car is real, okay, and this man is real, the police cars in the distance are all CG. The water, the every, everything you're looking at is CG. You know, and then they CG quote, they CG quote the, the ground and stuff. To make it look like how it looks in the movie. It's crazy. Alright. 
And that's the kind of level of CG we're looking at. And remember, Metropolis is also a CG world. It's not a real world. Now, I say all of this to say up to this point, even some of the interactions were not completely finished. You can tell that the way how, uh, for instance, the League kind of attacked Superman and certain scenes where Superman is um, not so much Superman. Just where the League was attacking Superman for a minute there kind of felt a little bit unreal. Um, but for the most part, they got the physics down with that scene where Superman uh, eventually flies off and stuff. Of course, it is smeared. The, the, the high level of uh, CG is smeared by when Superman has to talk, uh, where Whedon decided to take a quiet Henry Cavill and make him talk and say, I know you. That was a little bit weird. And then uh, another place where it was weird was where he lifted up Batman in the air and said, don't let me live, you won't let me die. And it looked a little bit uncanny valley. All right? So we're being real. We're not trying to pretend around here. Now, where things really started to fall apart was in the final act. And I'll show you just how different that CG is to the CG that was earlier on. So if you look at the earlier on CG, these characters look like they fit into this world, right? But you can tell that the world is detached from these characters. So when you start to see like Wonder Woman facing off against Steppenwolf, the ground doesn't look like real ground. The lighting makes these characters look like they're etched out. So it feels like this here is detached from this world. And same thing for Steppenwolf. So while the action is going on, you feel like this is a CG world and these characters are operating on top of that CG world. The same thing we got with Thor Ragnarok where when they're fighting, it feels like this character is separate from this CG world as she's moving around. Valkyrie, or whether it's not only Valkyrie, but everybody. I mean, Hela looked like she was separated from the CG world. Here it looks a little bit more better with the uh, special effects on it, but you still feel like there's a green screen behind here. This stuff feels uh, like a piece of the set, and then it feels like it goes into a wall here. There's a wall here, and this is not real water and everything. And she feels separate from that world. And let me let me be clear to you that the same thing happened in Black Panther. In fact, here, when we're looking at Black Panther, you can clearly see that these are two separate characters because they silhouette against the world that they're in. So it's two separate characters. Uh, and the action sequence here feels like they're they're doing it in front of some kind of screen. Like they're, they're spinning them around and there's a screen in the background. That's exactly how it feels. And that's why I keep on telling people Especially the final fight scene with uh, Black Panther, but there are a number of other scenes where, uh, with the car, when it was flipping, when he was running up a wall, you could tell it's CG, right? And the characters literally move CG like, like Black Panther, he's not supposed to move that fast, right? We saw him in uh, Captain America Civil War, he was moving that fast. So I get the feeling that the CG kind of fails them when they try to go to the CG route. And that's why I said Marvel's not necessarily the greatest when it comes to CG. That is the MCU. Let me show you good CG. Let me show you great CG. So we saw here relatively good CG. Uh, it wasn't as good as the CG here. So the CG here was impressive. Okay? The CG here was impressive. The CG here was impressive. Okay? This CG was not as good, and I could tell Joss Whedon had something to do with it. The CG here was impressive, but still not on the level of the CG before, all right? Certain parts of it were not as impressive, okay? The CG here was the least impressive of all the CG. In the final act, it was the least impressive. And it reminded me of this CG here, and it reminded me of this CG here. It could tell it was a Marvel director directing the CG, and there are a couple of reasons. The first one, lack of details. So while, yes, the ground had different color tones and color palettes, the, first of all, the physics of this motion, something's wrong with it. The second thing is the characters feel like they're outside of the environment. That is to say, the world seems to be a fake world. And even though uh, they're fighting here, I can tell that somebody skinned this ground. The ground wasn't like this. And so that's why it feels a bit fake. And I'll show you some other uh, places where that was the case. All right, so we talked about Black Panther and the world being fake again and the characters feeling like they're outside of it. Same thing here. But when you go and you look at, say, Star Wars, the level of CG there, this is a CG character and you buy it. You believe that's a character. You believe this is a real world. You believe the ground is snow. 
You believe these things. And that's great CG because it has a lot of details and also the physics of the movement of these characters fits in with the environment. Now, particularly here, look at that. It looks like he's on, he's not standing on this surface. This surface looks weird. And it looks like he's fake. He's fitting into the, like he's in a CG environment. Now, to be honest with you, there was green screen behind him and he was sitting on something, something like this. But this stuff looks fake as hell. When I looked at a parademon falling down, when I remember Batman jumping off the ledge and you can see him falling down the shaft of the tunnel, it looked fake as hell. And I know Whedon had something to do with it. I don't know if it's 65 meter, millimeter film. I don't know what they did to digitize it, but it looks fake. It does not feel like this character is in this world. When Pat Batman was also throwing out his grappling hook to catch the Flash, it looked fake as hell. When the Flash was with Cyborg, he just dropped Cyborg by the mother boxes that are fused, it looked fake as hell. And so that caliber of CG that we saw early on in the film, it completely dropped off from what it was. But it's perfectly on the level of, say, a Marvel film, like Thor Ragnarok. That's the level of CG they have. That's the level of CG they have. All right, this is uh, Hela in uh, Asgard, supposedly, right? This is Luke facing Kylo Ren in Star Wars. Totally different levels of CG. These people feel like they fit into this world, like they're there. This doesn't look like that. This looks like a woman in front of a green screen. This does not feel real. This this guy looks like he's standing on a virtual world. Like they, they, they filmed him separately to this world and then fit this world in. Looks fake as hell. And that's the difference. When you feel the characters are in that environment, even though the environment is mostly CG. That's the difference. When you look at these guys here, they feel like they're in this world. This world doesn't feel CG. The city doesn't feel CG. That's grounded. That's when you're going for a realistic vibe. And you can tell the difference in the directors here because this does not feel grounded. This does not feel grounded. This does not feel grounded. Get what I'm saying? Let me go a little further. This does not feel grounded. This feels like a joke. Okay? <laughs> this absolutely doesn't feel grounded. It feels like some kind of joke. Okay? If, if something's going to splatter its blood, it's not going to splatter it like that. This feels completely grounded and there's so much CG going on here. This is Luke Skywalker approaching the forces of Kylo Ren. This fight felt fake as hell. Besides him hitting him with a fork and sending him flying, which doesn't make any sense. The other thing is, look at them again. The lack of detail on the ground, first of all. The, the, the rocks and stuff that are falling, the ground looks nice and smooth, you know. And then he's hitting him, and the, the way how the physics happens doesn't even feel the way it should be. How, and on top of that, how you could be hitting a guy with a fork and he goes flying? That don't make no sense. But in addition, you can feel the lack of detail here. It's just too basic, and it reminds me of Marvel films again. And the lack of detail right here. Here are all of Hela's forces, their goons climbing up on the ship. And look at this, look at this, look at the lack of detail here. It feels like these things just were put here. It doesn't feel like something has been destroyed or that Hela threw a, a, a kind of a knife stake thing through this, uh, this gated thing. It feels fake as hell. Fake. And it's the fakeness of these things that I just don't buy. Of course, I was into the story, so I didn't really worry. But I'm just showing you the difference in caliber of CG. This looks real and grounded. This looks real and grounded. This looks real and grounded. Okay? This looks real and grounded. This looks very real and grounded. This looks real and grounded. But this, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Right? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Okay? And that's what people are talking about. But they don't realize it's on the level of Marvel. It's not, it doesn't have all the pretty colors, but it's on the level of Marvel. And so there was this, this beam of light. Even when Stephen was leaped up to get Cyborg, there was this beam of light around him. And it, sometimes the characters actually look clunky. They looked uh, very CGI-ish in, in sometimes. When uh, 
Wonder Woman broke the, the floor of the ground, Steppenwolf and Cyborg fell down. It looked very CGI-ish. And the reason being, one, the physics wasn't there. Two, because Steppenwolf has power, so the dust coming off the ground, the physics of that blast, the afterburn, the, the, the waving of the, the atmosphere, none of that was there. None of that was there. The details on the ground and the dust coming up from it, none of that's there. We just get light coming in, but no dust moving. This is a god. He's supposed to sh tremble the ground, and a, none of that was happening. What we got in the tunnel sequence, in the tunnel battle where the ground shook and stuff, none of that. So, and the details on Steppenwolf were lacking as some of the details on Superman. And we could tell this was a CGI character because of that. So that we got that Marvel effect. And it's amazing that a lot of the DCEU fans were like, man, it's like a Marvel movie. It's like a Marvel movie. And then we get the, the horns and stuff we got at the end of Thor Ragnarok. We got the horns at the end of the Black Panther fight scene. It's a typical Marvel thing where they like to play a lot of horns. We got that. So that's why a lot of DCU fandom really just lashed out at that. But for me, I pardoned it because for me, I was saying, okay, I see this is a combination of Marvel and DC. I get it. I'm going to respect it for what it is. But I didn't feel it was finished, but I allowed it. And even with those flowers, the, that Wiccan look, flower stuff that was coming up, you know, they say it's, Joss Whedon spreads, spreads his fairy dust. He's kind of Wiccan-like in his approach to things. I really didn't like the flowers coming up and that funky looking stuff. But again, I excused it because I was thinking to myself, this is a fusion between two directors. Let it slide, right? And so I just want you guys to understand when you guys say Thor Ragnarok has better CG and Black Panther has better CG than Justice League, then you're saying this, effectively you're saying this with a little bit more color in it <laughs> and a higher resolution, this is better CG than this stuff. And 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 this stuff. Which is just freaking epic. Okay? It's not. Okay? And you can see the difference also in how uh, Wonder Woman blasts the Wolf uh, in this scene versus when she blasts him in the tunnel. The physics is, is much more intense. There, she blasts him, he goes up in the sky, he hits against a wall, and pieces of the wall fall off like chunks. Even when she's saving Aquaman, the, the, the stuff breaks off like chunks. It feels unreal because when something like that breaks, there's a lot of dust and a lot of stuff that comes down with it. And the light changes up how things fall. And so it felt very fake. Because the details were lacking. Okay? And so that's what you see here, and that's what Marvel films. The details are always lacking in their stuff. And stuff's supposed to be old and rusty, but yet the paint, it just all, this, the ship looks fake. It's supposed to be old, but it doesn't feel old, right? Um, and so when you look at, say, Star Wars, on the other hand, there's a lot of detail in their sets and in their CGI. Look at these, these creatures. They look very real, and they move very real. And that's the difference. When uh, Aquaman was punching Steppenwolf in the final uh, act before Wonder Woman comes and destroys his axe, and Superman blows, comes and blows the uh, ice breath on him, we know it's Whedon. Why? First of all, Jason Momoa comes up to Steppenwolf, and he takes, like, forever to punch him. And then when he does, he just touches Steppenwolf, and he goes flying. Just, you don't feel no power in that punch, and that's not how it is. And you knew that was Whedon that directed that scene. You look at this, Eldris Alba. And either it looks like he's moving on the ground at blistering light speed, or <laughs> the ground just does not look connected to him. He looks separate to it. It's a CG background, right? And that's the problem with Marvel. When people say Marvel has great CG, I look at them and roll my eyes like, you serious? We know they just they put CG to make that ground look like how it looks. You know, it, it doesn't feel real. Even though you animate it, it doesn't feel real. It feels like... You're standing on a glass with, with these uh, like fluorescent lights on them, but it don't feel like you're standing on it, really. You feel separate to the glass, separate to the environment. Here's Black Panther fighting the other guy. Interestingly enough, both Asgard and this underground place have these uh, tall line things. So I'm guessing they use the, you know, the CG design from Asgard to do these railroad things. Look how detached these guys look. And they look animated. They don't look like real people fighting. 
and they don't move like real people fighting. Again, just for your benefit, the Parademons, Steppenwolf, I just showed you uh, Star Wars, The Last Jedi, and the characters moving in there, and it's just on a whole other level. This stuff, the CG here is so much better than the CG here, okay? The CG here is behaving like the CG here. In fact, these are not full CG. Steppenwolf moves better than these, these CG characters, okay? You can tell it's all CG, and that's the problem. So, you you know, you don't compare God, uh, Star Wars. And that's why I said, with Justice League, I was saying that Star Wars had the better finish. And because of these scenes, these Marvel-like scenes, like people like to say, okay, I'm not going to trash it like that. But I'm saying, the scenes lack the physics and stuff that's necessary. You have to show those things, which Star Wars takes into account. So that when we see Luke Skywalker facing off against Kylo Ren, it feels very freaking real. Okay? When we see... Uh, Aquaman facing off a Steppenwolf, it doesn't feel real, it don't look real, it don't even look like they're part of the environment. When we see Black Panther facing off against the other guy, it don't feel real. In fact, both of them look like CG characters, uh, CG blobs, and it just don't, and they don't even look like they're in the environment. But when we look at early on in Justice League, whether it's here with uh, this scene here, a lot of it feels very, very real. Okay? There's one point where it didn't feel so real it was exciting but it didn't feel so real which was when the league attacked superman and they kind of just went clink 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 and stuck to him and i i believe if zach was there to fully direct that scene he would have gotten more physics into it the air the atmosphere just the way how you do things when he pulled in wonder woman and grabbed her that felt very visceral that felt very real uh when uh aquaman came in and started to attack superman and then cyborg came and tried to restrain him those two moments didn't feel exactly real. It felt like you just stuck the characters onto him. And what they should have done, because he stopped, he, he grabbed uh, Aquaman's thing. I know they have super speed and all that. But they should have still allowed the physics so that when Superman grabbed them, they shook up a bit. That was all you needed to do. Shake them up a little bit. You know, show that the inertia stopped them in their tracks and they kind of buckled. Well, he didn't get that. And so that told me that uh, Zach wasn't there to really give his touch on that shit. Nonetheless, it's all good. Um, so, because uh, when Zach's directing, he knows exactly what he wants out of the post-production. And you could tell he was absent for a certain part of the film and a certain part of the post-production. Um, the scenes with Batman taking on them parademons look dope as hell. That's, again, you saw the physics of the motion. You saw the physics of what was happening. You know, that whole tunnel sequence was great. Um, so you can tell the difference in CG here. You got to understand this is CG. This is CG. That is CG. <laughs> okay. All right. Some of the background is CG. You got to understand that. And that's the difference between a Marvel film, the end of Justice League fight sequence and the rest of Justice League and Star Wars and those kinds of movies. All right. Here again. I had some questionable CGI with Henry Cavill's face here. You can see as he smiles. It looks kind of a little bit weird. A little uncanny valley. But for the most part, they tried to pull it together. Still, his face looked a little bit funky with the beard. The, the pieces of facial hair is different places. But for the most part, kind of looked like Henry Cavill. But again, you could tell this is Whedon. Let me tell you what. Lack of details. The ground looks good, more or less. The grass looks okay. All right? But here's the thing that kind of... The sky looks a little bit, you know, like CW. <laughs> it looks more TV. There are all these TV angles. No, no, nothing exceptional, nothing different about them. And if this was a Zack Snyder-directed piece, it would come across a lot different. 